the media's campaign against Meghan Markle. Individuals who know Meghan personally have been increasingly speaking out to contradict the negative portrayal of her in the British media. These individuals include close friends, former colleagues, and even some family members who have had the privilege of knowing her well over the years. These supporters, whose faces and names are clearly provided, offer a more balanced perspective by vouching for Meghan's kind, compassionate, and remarkable character. They share stories of her generosity, her dedication to charitable causes, and her unwavering support for those in need. Their testimonies paint a picture of a woman who is far from the villainous figure often depicted in the tabloids. Their first-hand accounts directly challenge the media's reliance on anonymous, unverified sources to shape public opinion against the Duchess of Sussex. These anonymous sources often provide sensationalist and misleading information, which is then amplified by the media to create a narrative that sells more papers and generates more clicks. This discrepancy between the personal testimonies and the media's narrative raises serious questions about the ethics and integrity behind the ongoing campaign against Meghan. It prompts a broader discussion about the responsibility of the media in reporting the truth and the impact of their stories on the lives of individuals. The public deserves to know the real Meghan Markle, not the distorted version created for profit and sensationalism. As the British media has relentlessly portrayed Meghan Markle in a negative light, a number of individuals who know her personally have come forward to vouch for her true character. These supporters, whose faces and names are clearly identified, directly contradict the anonymous, unverified sources that the media has relied upon to shape the public narrative. By providing a more balanced perspective, these defenders of Meghan offer a stark contrast to the one-sided depiction that has dominated the headlines since 2016. The British media has waged a relentless campaign against Meghan Markle since she first came into the public eye in 2016. Rather than relying on verified sources and first-hand accounts, the media has instead opted for a steady stream of negative coverage based on anonymous, unsubstantiated claims. This concerted effort appears designed to shape public opinion against the Duchess of Sussex, painting her in an unflattering light despite the glowing testimonials from those who know her personally, the media's campaign against Meghan Markle. The discrepancy between the glowing personal accounts from those who know Meghan Markle well and the relentlessly negative media coverage raises serious questions about the tactics and motivations behind the British media's campaign. This stark contrast is not just a matter of differing opinions but points to a deeper, more systemic issue within the media landscape. While Meghan's supporters provide a more balanced perspective by attesting to her kind and compassionate nature, their voices are often drowned out by the louder, more sensationalist media narratives. These supporters include close friends, colleagues, and even people who have worked with her on various charitable endeavours. The media has instead chosen to rely on a steady stream of anonymous, unverified sources to shape public opinion against her. These sources often lack credibility and are used to create a sensational story rather than an accurate portrayal of events. This raises concerns about the ethics and integrity of the media's reporting, as it seems to prioritise scandal over truth. The use of such dubious sources not only undermines journalistic standards, but also has a profound impact on public perception. They appear to be deliberately crafting a narrative that contradicts the first-hand experiences of Meghan's own friends and acquaintances. This deliberate crafting of a negative image can have lasting effects on an individual's reputation and mental health highlighting the need for more responsible journalism. One must wonder what drives this concerted effort to undermine and discredit Meghan when the personal testimonies of those closest to her paint such a starkly different picture. Friends and family members describe her as compassionate, kind and deeply committed to her causes. Many people who know or have known Meghan for years are coming out with their faces and names, sharing their personal stories and experiences. They are telling the world how an amazing, incredible person Meghan is. They recount her generosity, her willingness to help others, and her genuine nature. Yet the British media has been on a campaign since 2016 to make the masses believe the opposite, portraying her in a negative light. They base their stories on faceless, nameless individuals, often using anonymous sources to back their claims. What would you call that, in all honesty? Is it fair journalism, 
or is it a targeted smear campaign? The media's campaign against Meghan Markle has been relentless, filled with sensational headlines and unfounded accusations. It raises questions about the ethics and motivations behind such reporting. Despite the negativity, Meghan continues to focus on her charitable work and positive contributions to society. Her resilience in the face of such adversity is truly commendable. And as more people come forward to support her, it becomes clear that the truth about Meghan Markle is far more nuanced and positive than the media would have us believe. The British media's obsession with Meghan Markle. Why won't they let go? It's been four years since Meghan Markle left the UK, after having lived there for only two years. Her departure was a significant moment, not just for the British royal family, but for the world watching. Meghan, an American actress who married into royalty, found herself at the center of a media storm. The scrutiny was relentless, and the pressure immense. Her decision to leave was not made lightly, but it was a step towards reclaiming her own life and sanity. Yet the British media seems hell-bent on continuing their smear campaigns against her. The question is, why? Despite her physical absence, Meghan remains a favorite target for tabloids. The headlines are often sensational, painting her in a negative light. This ongoing obsession raises questions about the media's motives and the public's insatiable appetite for royal drama. Is it simply about selling papers? Or is there a deeper, more insidious reason behind the relentless coverage? Meghan has severed ties with the British royal family in terms of financial dependency. This move was part of a broader plan to gain autonomy and control over her own narrative. Together with Prince Harry, she announced their intention to become financially independent, a bold step that broke with royal tradition. This decision was met with mixed reactions, with some praising their courage and others criticizing their departure from royal duties. She doesn't reside in any of their palaces, a symbolic gesture that underscores her break from the institution. The grandeur and history of these royal residences are a stark contrast to her new life. The empty palace rooms serve as a metaphor for the void left by her departure, but also for the freedom she has gained. No longer confined by the expectations and protocols of royal life, Meghan is free to chart her own course. And she's built an independent life for herself and her family in the United States. In California, Meghan and Harry have found a new sense of normalcy. They are raising their children away from the prying eyes of the British press, focusing on their philanthropic efforts and personal projects. Meghan's journey is one of resilience and reinvention, a testament to her strength and determination to live life on her own terms. Her story continues to inspire many, proving that it is possible to break free from the constraints of tradition and forge a new path. Despite this, the relentless coverage persists. The UK has just endured some of the most significant racial unrest in recent memory. Yet the media's focus remains on Meghan and Harry, instead of addressing pressing domestic issues. Meanwhile, the world, engaging in meaningful work from Africa to South America, they are often seen championing causes that are close to their hearts. Whether it's advocating for women's rights, supporting mental health initiatives, or working on environmental conservation projects, their efforts are making a tangible difference in the lives of many. Their commitment to these causes is evident in the time and energy they invest, often traveling to remote and underserved areas to bring attention to issues that might otherwise be overlooked. Meanwhile, back in the UK, the royal family continues to draw in millions from the public purse, money that many in the UK could desperately use for basic necessities like food, healthcare and education. The funding for the royal family comes from various sources, including the Sovereign Grant, which is funded by taxpayers. This grant covers the official expenses of the Queen and her household, including travel, security, and maintenance of royal residences. However, the amount of money allocated to the royal family has been a topic of debate for years. Critics argue that in a time of economic hardship, when many families are struggling to make ends meet, the lavish spending on the royal family is unjustifiable. They point out that the money could be better spent on public services that benefit everyone, such as improving the healthcare system, funding schools, or providing support for the homeless. But rather than scrutinize the royals, the media prefers to rehash tired, irrelevant stories about a woman who has moved on and quite frankly no longer cares about their opinions. Meghan Markle, who has faced relentless scrutiny and criticism from the British tabloids, has chosen to focus on her new life and the positive impact she can make.
Despite stepping back from her royal duties, she continues to be a target for sensationalist headlines and invasive reporting. The media's obsession with her every move, from her fashion choices to her personal relationships, often overshadows the important work she is doing. This relentless focus on Meghan distracts from more pressing issues, such as the financial accountability of the royal family and the broader social and economic challenges facing the UK. It raises questions about the role of the media in shaping public perception and the priorities they choose to highlight. Instead of holding the powerful to account, the media's fixation on Meghan serves as a convenient distraction from the real issues at hand. It's time to ask, why does the British media remain fixated on Meghan Markle? Could it be that racism is still deeply entrenched in their coverage? Perhaps it's easier for them to vilify an independent black woman than to confront the issues within their own society. But for many outside the UK and the US, these stories have become stale, unimportant, and frankly, a waste of time.